Yeah, Mel X Y Cry Make Child Till I Die. It's about like uh five thirty in the morning. I got up at four, you know what I'm saying? Um Hello Restless, listen to a couple of YouTube's uh response shout out, like I said, to the entire MGTOW verse. I'm your man Low AK the Angst Man coming through. I wanted to make this quick video um because this might ne not necessarily come off as MGTOW content. This might come off as I know that some of you are aware that um, in the the black YouTube community, in the black blogosphere, and when I say black, I mean um, predominantly African-American issues, there is a, a kind of like a civil war going on of sorts. And I use the Keep Your Head Up by Tupac in the, in the beginning because, and I don't know if this has anything to do with Tupac being a Gemini, but you can hear how he says all these things about how we should protect our women, how we that we have no right to tell a woman where when and where to create a baby, where we should be real to our women, where we should heal our women, why do we take from our women? All these things he's seen, he said, and then you can hear some of his other songs where he basically say bitches ain't shit. Now, yes, there is a love hate relationship with women in general in American uh, society and then there's a subset of love and hate that goes on with the African American community and it's much more prevalent it's much more in your face in the African American community and I have now yesterday I had my ear full of and I'm going to uh, point you to uh, youtubers Lashida for you um, uh, and, and, the, and the number four in the, in the uh, letter U, Lashida. And uh, Sarge WP, SWP, Sergeant Willie P, a.k.a. Infinite Wisdom. I listen to a lot of his videos because I like to hear, sometimes, you know, you, I don't know if you guys ever seen the movie Notorious, where they did the story about Biggie Smalls, and, and uh, Tupac was, him and Tupac were going back and forth, and he was trying not to beef with Tupac, and then, when he went to one of his shows, people were cheering and they were, I mean, excuse me, people were booing. And then he said to, he said to uh, the guy who played, I think Little Caesar, he said, you know, sometimes you got to rise above it, but sometimes you got to step down in the shit. And then he started rapping, who shot you? And then everybody started clapping. I feel like sometimes I just got to step in and just say some shit. Now, the reason why the African-American Civil War is a problem for MGTOW, um, not for MGTOW, excuse me, why it relates to MGTOW is because it is the direct result of gynocentrism. The, the problems in the African-American community come from a lack of understanding of the difference between genotype and phenotype. See, and, and I'm the one to air the dirty laundry. Black people or African-American blacks are, they are in a, an internal struggle between the concept of the one drop rule and the concept of the brown paper bag test. The one drop rule is a rule that uh, well, I think it was generally given by um, white slavers to say that if the person had a drop of black blood in them, that they would be black. The brown paper bag test is uh, something that came on a little later than slavery in American society, where if an African-American was the color of a brown paper bag or lighter, they were marketable. They were... Uh, you know, they got the jobs where you could see them. They weren't just the staff back in the kitchen. They were people that you'd actually see at the door. And, you know, we're talking about, 
let's talk a little bit about marketing before I go into the meat of this. When, when it comes down to marketing, you have to understand that a business or a person is selling a product or service. When I used to work in this one place that um, that produced a product for sale, the front office and the back office looked totally different. The back office was uh, there was a mess. There was ink all over the place. There were spare parts and things like that. The technician worked back there. He knew where everything was. And then the front office is where all the all the colorful marketing packages and the pictures of happy families and and Fido or Toto and the white picket fences and and you know um, all that stuff green grass and the, the everything was vacuumed the little door chimed so the front office and the back office are two different things but the whole purpose of that business being in existence is to sell a product or service now we as people sell ourselves so when I go on a thread like when I now I'm not attacking Lashid Lashida for you, but when I go on her, when I go on her and many other, and I'm not, I don't know if she's pro-black or black conscious or what, how, I don't know if she identifies. I don't really identify. I just know what a person says through her content. When she talks, when she ha when she uses words like Africoid, she she'll say Caucasoid, and then she'll say Africoid, and then she'll say something about uh, the original Hebrews, and she'll say some other shit. Like when when I hear people that talk like that. I automatically know where they're coming from. And everybody has the right to their own opinion. But what I see in a lot of these threads are black women, African American black women and some black men who are like who are like simps or manginas saying, "Oh, you know, like they were getting on uh, this rapper named Kendrick Lamar because he has a biracial wife and they were getting on him because of her features and when I say getting on him, I mean in criticizing is he really um, is he really conscious? Is he really Afrocentric and all this type of stuff? And what concerns me and what why I understand that the black uh, the quote unquote black community is basically going to be on its way out of the door in give it ten ten to twenty more years is because they cannot discern the difference between what they need to do now and what happened in the past you see african americans are are primarily genotypically mixed race people and only in america they have only in america i'm not well most of the time mostly from all my travels because i've been to south america and i've been to the middle east and i can tell you that in America, African Americans have this. The, uh, the majority of them have this, this, um, this fantasy about some some kind of um, black uh, utopian. They're going to create some kind of black nation. They're going to have some kind of standards. And the, one of the one of the ways they fail. And I'm talking to you too, Sarge WP. Not saying that you're a failure, but saying the reason why, because you talk about this a lot. The reason why African Americans fail is because they don't use logic. They don't, they're not low. L-O-E. They don't understand that when you have a mixed genotype, you, you're not going to, there, there's not going to be a beauty standard. The beauty standard is going to be whatever is most marketable and whatever creates the highest value. Whatever you can stick on a front cover, whatever gets you paid is what's going to have the highest value. And currently, that is a woman, currently, as what we've seen in marketing materials, that is a woman that has features that are representative of what the general population wants to see. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just, it is what it is. So that's going to leave some people out. And I remember... When I was in high school and black chicks used to used to look down on me and they used to raise up this one light skin green eye do see when black women do it it's okay see this is where gynocentrism comes in and there's uh, and like all these black guys on her thread I mean not all of them a lot of them do say hey you know what you know azalea banks 
um, made these comments and she says she doesn't date black men and she's a dark skinned chick and then she laments over how um, there's their shade through on dark skinned women. Listen, when it comes to the chicken and the egg, gynocentrism came before racism. Because in order to have in order to have own groups, you need to have a woman who selects a mate, and the mate that the woman selects is going to be representative of what other men want to get to have access to her. That's why in the mid to late 2000s, you saw this influx of niggas wearing like um, dreadlocks and dyed tips. Why? Because T Pain and Lil Wayne and all those niggas that came from the south that rap but they were they never were never been to Jamaica never been a Rastafarian they rocked the dreadlocks and it became marketable so what did other and then when dude saw that the dude with dreadlocks was getting pussy what did he do he started growing dreadlocks and if you couldn't grow them you weren't as quote unquote hot so i'm saying that to say this and i wrote this on her on her thread I do what I have to do to survive. Race, ethnicity, skin color, genotype, phenotype, all those things are things I have no control over. And I'm not going to sit up here and, and try to rationalize or I can't, there's, there, there, I, can, I, I, can, I can definitely agree that there's some emotion or energy behind it. But when I do, when I do my morning writings or any, any type of emotion, I write it out and I write it on paper and I get the energy. I go to the gym or I, when I go train, when I go spar, I take that shit out there and I, and I use that as fuel to do something positive. I'm not concerned about, and let me say this real clear so you can hear me. I'm not concerned about what you niggas are doing. Okay. Now, I might be coming out a little emotional on this. I know logical emotion, but my logic is governing my thought. The emotion is simply delivering the message directly to you. I am not concerned about a mass of people who have no aim or no, no logic to the reasons why they should take on a certain activity or refrain from a certain activity. I choose to associate myself with people regardless of the color of their skin, who their parents were, where they're from, what language they speak, who are like-minded, and who are going, or I can foresee, are going in similar direction as I am. Those are the people who I, like, I choose myself to al align myself with. I gave up on trying to be the afrocentric dude I, I was just like y'all i used to wear the medallions the cross colors and shit you know what i'm saying i used to do all that shit and i was my dad's from africa so i was like really you know but then when you motherfuckers started you know talking shit about africans right making fun of people from west africa sub-saharan africa making fun of me making fun of my african name and shit like that and then you niggas will turn around and throw on a fucking medallion and shit when you see when you want to say no justice, no peace, fight the power, you're gonna wear a dashiki and all this shit. Call yourself some Muslim name when you know damn well that the Arabs had slaves way before the Europeans did. <laughs> and I look at you niggas and I'm just like, I'm glad I left that plantation. So I'm definitely a man going his own way. Lashida, for you, do what you gotta do, baby. You know, it's you know, you have your own your own followers and your own content, and you gotta pump out your content to people who listen to you, Sarge too. See, the thing about Sergeant WP is he's a special. He's like you know, he's like that. Uh, he's like the green Eminem. You know what I mean? He is a dude who's a chocolate motherfucker, but he's unique in the sense that. He the way he talks, he's saying basically the same thing that other people are saying, but he's saying it in a way that is has logic. But some there's the, like the the biggest fallacy in all of his arguments are, and I will always go to this: the biggest fallacy in all of his arguments are 
black people are not a homogenous group of people and they will never be a homogenous group black people in america or black people anywhere are not are not a homogenous group of people and the other fallacy is that white people are not homogenous either they have different cultures and the, and when we start to respect each other's uniqueness i think that people should click up unite with people who are like minded versus the way someone appears and factors that are not in that person's control i choose to align myself with people who go in a direction based on choice not based on uncontrollable factors male angst why i cry MGTOW till i die stay tuned um, i'm gonna I'm, I'm still working on my next um, economics video so stay tuned peace